Greetings once again. Happy to be with you. It is my privilege and my pleasure to always share with you that glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Jesus was either a maniac, a psycho, uh, an egotistical fool, or he was who he says he is, the Son of God. The one way, the truth, and the life. I know this is a very controversial thing because many of us were introduced to and have been introduced to the message of the gospel by way of imperfect people, people who are selfish, uh, people who are misinformed, people who have used religion and the Bible to perpetrate every kind of carnal insanity that they want. But the fact still remains, you are here, you are breathing, you are have, you have life in you, and it's because of God. Whether you believe or think you believe or don't believe in God or not, you are here, and it is a testimony that there is something, someone greater than you. That is your reason for being here. That puts you here. You didn't put yourself here. You didn't even choose the parents you have. You don't. You didn't choose the shape nose you have, the color you are, the sex you are, where you were born, what time you were born. Trust me, that speaks of a higher power who is a person that is greater than you. Um, that was a beautiful conversation with a brother of mine, Joseph Blocker. Uh, and uh, I, I want uh, him to know and everyone to know that um, I have an easier time talking with people who are really looking into the truth and searching for truth than I do have with Christians. I don't want you to get, I'm not bashing Christians or anything, but um, Christians um, a lot of times don't believe what Christ said. Christians a lot of times don't believe what God said. And Christians many times will pit themselves against you if you make a claim about God that brings God's glory to you. Because Christians have a hard time a lot of times understanding that God is not trying to get us to just glorify him and put him somewhere where he's untouchable and he's 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 so great that um we can't touch him and we can't um receive any of the glory that he's placed on us and um i i again i'm not trying to bash christians but you take away from believers the power of the gospel if you do not release that freedom and that blessing of being glorified, being made righteous by a loving God who is not ego tripping and has no problem with you shining. He created you to shine. Okay. And um, it, it, it's a trip. It's a tug of war because uh, on the one hand, people who struggle with the whole concept. See, I talked to a lot of people. And on this is what you have on one hand. You have on one hand people who struggle with the whole concept of a God and a Christ and a Christianity. I mean, a Jesus and a, and their, their their head is filled with experiences and things that they have heard about Christ from Christians. Things that they have heard about Christ from Christians. And the detrimental thing about that is they throw the baby out with the bath water completely you know the fact that the name Jesus is probably only four centuries old and you know uh, he came out of a Hebrew tongue the fact that people have taken and you know plagiarized I mean just taking the image of Christ and created an image that is popular from a Eurocentric uh, uh, visionary standpoint and it, all of these things just destroy people's ability to hear a message like the kingdom of God is the greatest thing afforded to you and it's yours. Because everything that they have heard concerning the kingdom of God is filled with tyranny, condemnation, 
guilt, shame, and uh, murder, and uh, racist supremacy. And you can't blame them. Well, I've been having a, a, a real good time the last couple of days. <laughs> okay, dealt with Mooney. Now, people have been forced to just um, go in the opposite direction of anything that speaks of Christ and Christianity and um, uh, salvation and the kingdom. And, you know... I really think it's a diabolical, uh, satanic, um, uh, it's just a diabolical, satanic trick, um, because if, let me tell you the nature of evil. The nature of evil is this, to expose you to something that is good for you from a negative vantage point. To expose you to something that will benefit you in a bad light. This is the psychology of evil. See, it's why there's widespread public approval of immorality. And morality is displayed as a state of living where you can have no fun, where there's no enjoyment, and all of the restrictions uh, associated with re morality are magnified. Immorality is presented in a light, uh, freedom, fun, uh, the ability to make your own decision. Uh, the ability to choose, the ability, and the masses go for it. Well, when it comes to the gospel of the kingdom of God, uh, church folk and folks outside the church alike are, for the most part, uninformed about the kingdom, and it is the reason why we were put here in the first place. We were put here to be rulers and beneficiaries of a glorious kingdom where everybody ranked equally and everybody was blessed and empowered, supplied abundantly and loved. And evil has complicated that simple thing. I, t I, I told a brother today in my writing, and I would encourage you to uh, look at the video that uh, I posted, um, Have the Kingdom, and look at the comments after that. Look at my line of comments, because that is what has motivated me to write this video and, uh, you know, uh, shoot this video. And, you know, you guys, as I was saying earlier, uh, there are some Christians, you know, you, 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 you get on my page, you make a couple of comments, I make comments back to you, and um, <laughs> I do not sense uh, anything genuine as it relates to love and understanding and forbearance coming from you. I see a dogmatic <laughs> desire to express uh, some legalistic uh, vantage point that you're coming from and you start quoting a bunch of scriptures and uh, the kingdom of God is not is not mentioned what is mentioned is what people are doing right and what people are doing wrong and I know there are videos that I've even made that talks about the the immorality of the world and what the world is doing to position themselves but I have very little to say to Christians about what they're doing wrong, about what they're doing uh, that they should not be doing. Because if you call yourself a Christian, then one of the things afforded to you is the Holy Spirit leading you into what you should and should not be doing. So you don't need me on the Internet telling you what to do. 
But some of Christians have a hard time understanding that. Um, to be on the internet correcting Christians, it, that's a waste of time. There's a world out there of people who are searching for answers. Well, point being stated is I get into interaction with people um, like this and I can make a video like this in response to someone's comment not because I feel like I'm a teacher or of this person or anything like that there's some of you that you profess to uh, the validity of my teaching and I thank God for you I appreciate you for that but then there are other people who are learned and what they have sought after and they uh, present contradictory statements or statements that uh, dispute from a loving, kind, and respectful way. And those are people that I can interact with. I don't elevate them over Christians, but, you know, this thing that we've received from a Eurocentric standpoint called Christianity has made some of us out of our brains. Really, out of our brains. And I'll say it again emphatically. Jesus Christ was not a proponent, advocate, originator, or even... Christianity, that ain't his thing. That's y'all's thing, okay? Christianity is not his thing, all right? Now, I know that shakes up a lot of people that call themselves Christians and all that. If you call yourself a Christian, I'm not saying you're going to hell, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm not the one who put nobody in hell, and I don't think God has anything against Christians. But I do think Christianity has helped a lot of people go in a direction far against the kingdom. And the kingdom is something that the scripture says is the Father's good pleasure to give to us. And Jesus even said himself, the kingdom of God since John the Baptist day suffered violence. And it's my job to let you know what that means. To let you know what we should be living for. And I have taken my stand on faith in the promises of God. That this is the reason why we're here. This is the reason why Jesus died to save us. No, he wasn't a so-called white man. There's no such thing as a white man. There's no such thing as a black man. But if you want my belief, my opinion, based on what I see about the region and the time that Jesus was in, he was dark. He wasn't African, I don't think, you know. Uh, he certainly won an Afro-American or a black man, but he did not look like Peter Frampton. Okay, he, he wasn't blonde hair with blue eyes. Okay, now uh, his brother, you know, um, uh, again, dear brother, I'm going to see if I can't read his comments. I know my time is short, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to uh, be too long with it. Keep this so I can watch my time here. Um, it says, uh, accepting any modern version of the Bible as the word of God is self-hypnosis in my opinion. I have traveled the world and studied these things in Europe, Israel, and Africa. I have seen for myself the changes that have been made to the Bible. This is the same book that was used to rape, pillage, and enslave three quarters of the world. I can list many changes that have been made to the Bible in the last 150 years. Which of the hundreds of different versions and interpretations do you accept? Because you cannot accept them all. We have succumbed to that most cruel of vanities. We see God in our image, not the opposite. <clears throat> when I see people worshiping the image of a dead white man nailed to some sticks and then trying to make me feel obligated because he died for my sins, where well, I can only say that I was not raised just to go for whatever I have been told. I have seen the faith and belief in Jesus save lives, and I have seen it ruin lives. Some with Islam, same with Islam. Okay, uh, I'll say this uh, to you, brother, and to anybody else who's watching. If I'm looking off to the side, it's because I have two screens up uh, at a time. First of all, uh, no, it's not faith in Jesus that uh, destroyed anyone's life. It, it, it's not faith in Jesus. You have a lot of people who 
are uh, misinformed in their position and what they have done. Faith does not destroy anything because faith pleases God. Faith does not destroy. And if you're watching someone who was trusting in God and in your eyes, uh, it seemed like they led their lives into destruction or they had faith in Jesus and it seemed like they led their lives into destruction. Well, first of all, uh, you run yourself into a pit when you are external with your uh, reasoning for conclusions. See, the whole thing with faith is faith can't be judged by or you can't determine whether or not somebody is in faith looking at them from the outside in. Because faith is a spiritual thing. That's why you got a lot of atheists who, and, and that's not really a position. Because if, if a person is an atheist, um, they're wasting their whole life. And this is why I say it. You're spending your life trying to prove somebody exists that does not exist. I mean, you're trying to prove that somebody does not exist, that you're saying that they don't exist. If they don't exist, why are you spending five minutes trying to prove that they do? I mean, that they don't. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, it's really a crazy, psychotic line of reasoning. I'm not calling you crazy, but that's a psychotic line of reasoning. If someone does not exist, why are you spending time trying to prove that they don't? If they don't, they'll just go away. Or they never were. But getting back to the thing with faith, uh, saving people's lives and then destroying people's lives, no, that wasn't faith. But even beyond that, you can't tell whether or not a person is in faith because faith is not something that is externally examined by anything outside of you. The only evidence you have of faith is what is on the inside of you. Because faith is the spiritual force to believe something independent of anything that contradicts that confidence and energy in you. That's why some people have faith and some people don't. And faith in God is the stabilizing force in the air. For instance, uh, whether you want to call Christianity or the studying or the belief in God and a heaven and salvation through the sacrifice of Christ, whether you want to call it mythology or not, every other religion that you enter into offers you false promises based on the uh, surmisings of men, based on things that they can't prove. And for you to say, that the Bible has been changed where well, it may have been. I look at the fact that the Bible is sold for money. That's abominable to me. Okay? Uh, the original writings didn't cost nobody anything. So, you know, we can talk about the Bible. And the Bible is not the Word of God. The Word of God is a person. The Word of God is Christ. And as a matter of fact, more valid as a Word of God than the Bible is you. See, um, I don't get offensive offended or defensive but some of the things that uh some of the comments that uh people send to me uh i get charged because you don't know what you're missing if you're just looking at the person of christ as a myth subject to the experiences and the knowledge that you have received based on him you are totally outside of faith and you don't know what faith is because a relationship with the person that created you destroys all of your uh, susceptibility to the jeopardizing energy and knowledge that comes from men's experiences where they were looking at something or reading something and they were drawing conclusions based on these negative things that were fragments of truth concerning a real living God who has you breathing. And it's not something that you can prove to a person with some scriptures or comments back and forth. 
You have to let people continue to live and you love them and you relate to them and you watch them come into their experience of knowing for themselves. But always stand for your faith and never be troubled by any of the things that appear contradictory about what is true and about what God has said about your right to the kingdom. Because see, if the enemy can continue to confuse the issue when it comes to the kingdom of God, then he can destroy your ability to move and maneuver in the earth like you're supposed to. And, and that's what I see it all about, my loved ones. I really do. I, I, I see it all about men who take facts. Let's look at the, uh, the part in this comment where it says, uh, accepting a modern version of the Bible as the word of God. First of all, I don't accept the Bible as the word of God. The Bible to me is one of the most prolific historical books about God's interaction with and purpose for man. But the Bible does not tell you it's the word of God because the Bible was not put together by itself to be an authority as the word in your life. The spirit is the authority in your life and the word of God, the Bible tells you, is a person and became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the word of God. That's the Bible. And that proclamation stands the test of time. I don't care how people have fumbled with it. Sure, I know it's been fumbled with. It's been tampered with. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even want to read any of the things that have been chrono chronologized, uh, chronologically uh, scripted throughout the centuries. You know why? Because you're left with the same thing that you're left with dealing with man and his writings in our current times. Trickiness and the ability to maneuver you into a position of subservience by the way they craft things. <laughs> Talk about the Bible. Look at the law. Look at American law. Look at how every five, ten years or two years some special interest group can rewrite or reinterpret the law and uh, advocate everything from um, sleeping with pigs to marrying the same sex, killing babies, it, laws, laws. So it, it, this thing with faith, brother, you've got to be more solid than your travels and your experiences, than your readings and things that you've heard. See, that's why Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger will they not follow. Because the gospel is this simple. If you can believe that someone loved you first enough to create you. And then two, enough to have a purpose for you that would always provide for you. And then three, enough to die for you after you refused to be satisfied to discover all of that goodness. You get distracted and do something else. And they say, never mind, I won't hold that against you. And gives you another chance to recover what you will enjoy for all eternity. That's the simplicity of the gospel. That's why Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. If you can believe that simply, I'm going to put this camera away. I mean, I'm going to put that away and not read anything else. If you can believe that simply, then you are free from all the complexities. Don't be fooled by this. Learned, prudent men say, the masses believe that, and the masses follow this. But learned Pruitt men are vying for the attention of the masses because they are unaware of the simplicity of the faith.
faith of the gospel that says you really don't have to worry about anything in your life. It's all taken care of. Trust God. Love you. Until next time.